welcome back to the anime news for the week ending August 17th, 2018. Got a variety of stuff to talk about today, particularly um, stuff that's a little smaller, a little quieter news than usual. Not a lot of big announcements, but an interesting sort of retro announcement this week. Uh, the anime studio AIC has announced they're starting crowdfunding for a new El Hazard anime work. Uh, called El Hazard The Dual World. This was a big franchise back in the 90s about uh, Japanese teenagers transported to another world. So sort of an, an, an isekai story, actually, back in the day. And I think AIC may be saying, hey, this is big now. Let's do, let's bring that back. Uh, it will feature some of the descendants of the characters in the original El Hazard, um, as well as some um, El Hazard characters coming back, uh, which sounds a lot of fun. The plan is to raise about $50,000 U.S. equivalent for a, I think, a five-minute pilot film. And then um, that will get shopped around for this new anime project, The Dual World. So the implication is it'll be kind of jumping back and forth between El Hazard and Earth uh, plot-wise. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, the story was centered on two new characters, Naoto and Farasha Jinai, who is... Uh, Jinai and Diva's daughter, which if you've seen El Hazard, that's a creepy prospect. Um, Naoto's life is, is upended when he meets a mysterious cat. Um, and then uh, stuff, bad stuff is happening back in El Hazard. Um, and uh, yeah, so it looks like a, a, a pretty straightforward uh, sequel to the original El Hazard. We'll see how that goes. But kind of cool seeing a, uh, a return of a classic. It will be directed by Yusuke Maruyama who worked on Aria the, Origin the Origination, Future Diary, God Eater, Soul Eater, Real Drive, Red Data Girl, Saikano, How to Raise a Boy and Girlfriend Flat, um, Tanari no Seki-kun, all as like unit director, episode directors. This would be his first, I assume it's a he, uh, first actual full-scale directing job. So hope that moves forward. Uh, sounds fun. It'll be uh, going on a crowdfunding campaign called Campfire which I believe, let me just check this real quick. Uh, um, is that a Japanese only thing? Yeah, that's a Japanese crowdfunding thing. So here's hoping that works out. Uh, moving on, a bit of news about Sword Art Online. Uh, Aniplex announced at Otakon that they'll be premiering the Sword Art Online um, Elicization anime. Um, that'll be at the Montalban Theater in Los Angeles, September 15th. It'll be the U.S. premiere of uh, Sword Art Online Alicization. I assume I'm pronouncing that right. It's basically an hour-long episode. Uh, it'll premiere in Japan the same day. So that's quite the scoop there. It'll also have premiere events in other countries as well. And the entire anime will premiere uh, in October in Japan. So that's pretty darn cool. And um, uh, it will include... Um, uh, the new anime will cover the Alicization arc of the novels so if you're interested in in sword art online head over to los angeles if you can and check that out uh meanwhile also in american anime news discotech has licensed all the original stuff it, it announced at otakon it's licensed giant robo area 88 both the ovas uh a lupin the third special blood seal of the eternal Mo mermaid i guess a movie kimigori orange road galaxy express three nines Psycho Armor Goverion, Bo 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 Bo, uh, Space Warriors Baldios, Voltus V, and God Mars. Uh, many of these are very well known anime series licensed over here in the US or brought over here in the US many moons ago, many, many years ago, actually, now returning finally to our shores. So that's really cool, really what Discotech is all about. Uh, Giant, Ro Giant, Robo will, ah, Giant Robo will come out on Blu ray with. Not only the Japanese audio, it'll have both of the English dubs. Loving this trend of having all the dubs available on all the releases. It'll also include the Ginrei OVA. Then um, Kimigori Orange Road, also on Blu-ray, uh, which is rather nice. Um, Disc Attack, oh, I'm sorry, Galaxy Express, also on Blu-ray. Um, it'll be the entire TV series on three Blu-ray discs uh, with an upscaled version. Uh, although a different upscale than the Japanese release, so FYI. And they said the uh, its version preserves more detail and more film grain. So it's one of those one of those things. Um, you know, th these are all um, trade-offs. 
Uh, but we'll, we'll also get on, be, also be on Blu-ray. I think these are, are these all Blu-ray releases? Um, yeah, looks like it. Uh, one cool thing is that the Lupin the Third movie will have a new dub, but using all the, uh, a new English dub, I should point out, including all, or using all of the voice actors for the Lupin the Third TV series. So Tony Oliver, Richard Epcar, Lex Lang, Michelle Ruff, and, and Doug Erholtz will be reprising their roles for that. So that's always neat seeing that continuity for things. Um, yeah, looks like these will all be Blu-ray uh, releases, and I think they're all going to be Blu-ray only. I'm not seeing any information here on DVD releases. So that's quite interesting. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, Area 88 will be on DVD. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's quite interesting. Um, so a lot of lot of anime coming to... Uh, to the States, which is obviously a good thing. Uh, meanwhile, um, the anime film Macquire, which is coming to uh, U.S. theaters September 21st, uh, we now have an English dub cast and an English trailer from um, uh, for that. Eleven Arts Anime Studio will be releasing it um, over here in, in the U.S. Um, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly. Uh, Xanthi Hoon will be play playing Makaya. Also in the cast, uh, Eddie Lee, Ryan Shanahan, uh, Jeremy Lee, Kevin T. Collins, Barnaby Lafayette, um, Michael Snyder, Allegra Clark, Ryan Bartley, and on down the list. A bunch of different people actually working on this thing. So that's cool to see that we've got uh, that coming up soon. Uh, let's see here. Also, kind of interesting uh, news item, actually speaking of Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Anime Film Festival announced that it's going to um, have... Anime Films Voice Actors Awards on September 21st, part of their festival. So they're basically working with some app that streams shows uh, and, uh, and chat with voice actors and industry professionals uh, for live streaming. And so they'll be presenting five awards, Best Vocal Ensemble in Anime Movie Special. I should point out, this is for films, not TV series. Best Male Lead, Best Female Lead, Best Male Supporting, Best Female Supporting in an anime movie slash special. So that's quite interesting. Uh, they're, also gonna, they're also working on a website. It's sort of a behind the voice actors thing. Uh, Bryce Pappenbrook and David Vincent will host, among others. So that's pretty interesting to see that we're getting some respect for anime film voice acting in America. It's kind of weird. Uh, finally, this kind of an odd news story, which I think is just kind of worth mentioning for it being quite different. Um... A group called Project YNP in Japan um, is releasing a doujin game for PCs called Future GPX Cyber Formula Sinveer. It's based on the Future GPX Cyber For Formula anime series. These are this is a doujin work, but they have and it originally created as fan works, but they have since gotten authorized by the copyright holders and. It's advertised on the official site, so somehow they contacted, they got in touch, and there is now a doujin game being released as an official thing. And this is kind of interesting, is this idea that, you know, just contact the copyright holders, and they kind of check it off, and then you're official, right? You're not just a, you're not, you're not illegal anymore. You're an actual legal, official, licensed thing. Now, I don't think any money is changing hands here. I think it's one of those things where basically... Um, the official uh, folks behind it, the official committee behind Cyber Formula is basically like, yeah, sure, go ahead, I would, that's fine. And, um, you know, no licensing fees will have to be paid, and presumably the, uh, uh, that is, with the understanding of the game, probably will not make a huge amount of money. But that's really neat to see a, a fan-created work get official recognition and, and a sign-off so it can be an official thing. That's really neat from... Uh, uh, the folks behind a thing that, as I recall, has not really seen much excitement in a while. Um, the, um, let me just double check here. Um, yeah, the TV anime was made back in the 90s. So it, was, it was sort of a 90s franchise. Uh, this, most, much of the staff went on to make Gundam Seed. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, there'll be a VR mode in it, which is kind of nice. So seems like kind of a, a smart idea, too. If you have one of these older franchises and fans want to make content, why not not only let them do it, but let them do that under your aegis, so to speak. And uh, obviously with a little bit of oversight, uh, but that makes a lot of sense. So cool to see fans getting their due. I uh, hope we will see more of it. And uh, that is all for the news for this week. So thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next week.